Welcome to Dane's Care of the Garage. Today, we're gonna to set the caster and camber with this caster and camber thing and a special service tool. Yeah, it's a piece of metal. Stand by. I bought this caster camber. It's not actually caster camber, it's just camber tool here that um, will help me set the camber on the truck. And it just kind of looks like this here. I'll show you how it works in a minute. First thing we had to talk about caster camber. Because I have to do a couple things. I need to reset the caster on this truck as well. But that's easy enough because it's going to be one shot. All right, what you have is for camber, which is the main thing we're going to set is, here's your wheels going down the road like this, okay? Now, cast your camber is yet negative or positive this way here. And we need to make sure that it's set eh, close to the middle, but maybe one degree off. All right, the caster th is another story. Caster, on the other hand, is where the pivot point is on your wheel. You have your wheel here, right? And you have a pivot point here, like this. Now, the top ball joint remains, the top ball joint is the one that you can move. The bottom one stays fixed. So if you move it this way, you move uh, your pivot point, which is down low, down here, in front of the wheels, okay? If you turn it this way, you're gonna move it down behind the wheels. And what you want is you want the pivot point to actually be in front of the wheels so the wheels follow. So what happens is you drive down the road and that's what's happening to this truck and I know at least the other side is wrong. You drive down the road and you're fighting the truck because it, it, you know, the wheels with the pivot point behind them, the wheels are being pushed. So they wanna keep doing this here. And so you're constantly having to steer it. You want them to follow the pivot point. You want the pivot point in front. Now, to better explain that, here's a caster. All right, now this caster, here's how it works. All right, the pivot point, this is the pivot point. Now this is extreme, but whatever. This is the pivot point right here. So when you roll like this, no matter where you go, that wheel follows you, just like that. Now, if that pivot point was in front, your wheels are gonna fight you because no matter how straight you do this, eventually, it's going to turn. So what's happening with this is it can't turn because you got the steering, but it's going to be, but but it's doing this the whole time you're, the whole time you're doing it is pushing it like that. So you want the wheels to follow you. So if you do this, and that's how a caster design, their wheels will follow that pivot point. And that there is what we want. So we want to set the caster so that the pivot point on the bottom there is on the front of the wheels, not on the back of the wheel. So we're not pushing against it. We're actually the, pushing the wheels. The wheels are actually following your pivot point and that way it'll run smoother. These are Moog parts, Moog front end parts. Uh, M-O-O-G, if you've never seen them, Moog. Um, these are the best front end parts on the market in my opinion, not just in my opinion. Other people may think different, but I know it pays to get good parts because you wind up doing things twice. The 05 Mustang, I put two sets of tie rod ends on it. Why? Because the first set, I just went down to a parts store and got the cheapest thing they had, and they're pre-greased, blah, blah, blah. And you don't have to grease them, and they don't have a grease fitting or a hole for one. So they wore out in no time flat, and I wound up taking, when I took them apart, one of them was completely dry. It didn't have any grease in it. The uh, Moog parts come with uh, grease fittings, and they're also better quality. So you can grease the things and they'll last a long time. These parts here, they don't get greased because there's, well, that's not what they are. This is your caster camber bushing. All right, now on the Ford, Ford gives you a single caster camber bushing here, okay? And this does both. You're, Ball joint's gonna be up in here, and this is the top of it, and that's pretty much in the center, but on the bottom, you see it's offset. So, what you do is, when you turn this, like this, it'll change the, um, the angle of the wheel. So, 
these things are usually rusty. I know the ones on this aren't, but I went ahead and got new ones anyway, just because I wanted to do this anyway. And uh, there's a different kind that you can get. If you're gonna, if you're lifting a truck or lowering a truck, vehicle, well, I know the truck anyway. If you're lifting it or lowering it, then you're gonna need to adjust your caster and your camber separately completely. Now, I'm not even to the same spot, so it's fine. I only need that because the, the, it, it, it's, you'll see when we get into it. But if you're lifting the truck, you could use these. And these here have two adjustments, one for caster and one for camber. You can use the little chart that comes with them to get the caster and the camber just right, but without actually adjusting it on the truck, if something, let's say you got an I-beam that's slightly bent and you don't realize it because it's just slightly bent. Slightly bent is enough to throw all your adjustments off and then you have to have a alignment rack or a tool like this here to do it. So why this is a special service tool is because what you got to get here, first thing we got to do is, is we have to zero this and we're going to use the rim and I cut this metal just so that it is doesn't hit the rubber that it's actually goes right there inside of the wheel and it's actually got the wheel on both sides all right so i'm gonna put this put this to be right about here and then we're gonna take this and you see that little knob on the bottom so we're gonna put this right here now i have on the bottom You have this little bubble. I have to get that level. All right, now once I get that right in the middle, like that, once I get the bubble right in the middle, like that, it's close. Now I can adjust this bubble here to zero. I'm just going to turn this here until I get that to zero. Now, theoretically, and you know I say that a lot, this is now calibrated. The reason I can use this back wheel is because this is a live axle or it's a solid axle so this is perfectly straight and by calibrating setting on the ground here the truck's going to be set in the front at the same off level whatever because it's not going to be setting perfectly level in your driveway but it's going to be close okay and so i've got the same calibration here that i can use up front now to see exactly where that camber is set all right, I didn't touch this thing at all. all right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this on here, right up against that wheel. And I'm going to turn this till I have, I, I should have cut this a little shorter than I did. I'll probably have to cut it shorter, but this is the idea until I get this bubble in the middle right there which tells me now that my camber is positive one degree that's probably okay but I'm gonna adjust this thing down because it's not fitting my wheel quite like I want it to no it's not it's way too long okay all right having done all that now we know what we're doing and how we're doing it I'm gonna show you exactly as we do it um, I know the caster's off on that side. With these here, you set the caster and camber at the same time. So the only difference that you're going to do here is this. This will be like zero. This will be the outside of the truck here. But yeah, this will be, let's say it's this side of the truck. It'll be right here. And then, so then when you turn this, one way it's going to, caster it to the back and one way is going to caster it to the front and it doesn't matter where because once you put it 
caster to the back the way I want it. Uh, well, actually, it would be caster to the front, um, which means this would be to the back. Then I'm going to set the camber with this on the back side, and then it'll be exactly how I want it. Now, do you remember this sucker here? It's this right here. Now, see where that is? That is caster to the front. Alright, let's figure this caster thing out. This is the new one that's going to go in it. So, that, that way, that means it's pulled all the way here. That means my axis are this way. And this wheel is pushing that caster. It's not bothering. So I want this to be around here. Now, mind you, it's going to be this one here. I want it to be on this side. Once it's on this side, then that's that's caster. And that'll be fine wherever it is on the side. And then I have to adjust it so that we have the camber, which is this right. This is the one we want to adjust. The caster's going to just be fine. You, you got two choices, father or negative caster. Uh, the camber, yeah, we're going to get that adjusted up. Camber should be... Um, no more than two degrees negative camber. Um, close to zero, or I'm liking like about one, a half to one degree is good for regular use. Now, if you're running a race car, you know, and you've seen the little corner car going around, I don't think they're on the track every day doing it, but. You're going around, you know, a course like this here. Then what you're going to want to do is you're going to actually want to change that whole setup. You're going to want, want your camera to be like this. And the reason they do that is because when you go around a corner this way, right, you've got, here's here's how your your tire tread is setting on the ground. If you go around a corner this way, the car's going to lean this way. When it leans this way and it puts weight on it, it's going to come down and you're going to have more tread on the track per corner. And when you, same thing on this way, when, when you lean this way, then um, lean this way there, you're going to have more on, on the track. Um, but we're doing everything dry. Okay, we're, we're not being stupid with it. I wouldn't do it anyway because we're wearing tires out. So anyway, let's get this done. What we've got to do is this bolt has to come out. Got a nut here and a bolt here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a, a wrench. Just metric. That got the first one right off the bat. Is a 15. It's a 15 on the back though. It doesn't, it doesn't. All you need is to just loosen that pinch nut, just like that. Now the trick is to get this out. Mind you, if you have a rusty one, you're really going to be fighting it. I've seen it. Mine aren't rusty. There should be no problem. And it's the only thing that's not rusty on this truck. Pop that like that. And that comes right out like that. Got a little grease on it, that's fine. I don't want it to, I don't want these things seizing up. So now you see, this is the, exactly the same. Only the nice thing is the new move part 
has more adjustments. But what you want to check though is your size in the middle and that's exactly the same. And that's just going to go right in there. I'm just going to go right in there. Right in there. Down. One of the things you can do with that is you can put that magnet on here, but once you jack the vehicle up, then you've thrown your angle off. So I want to put it back on. See how that moved? Alright, so here's what you got. With this to this side, I now have the top of this is this way so that means my to the, to the top of it is this way that means my pivot point back here and I'm pushing against the wheel so I'm going to turn it back I may wind up having to take this caliper off to do this I wish I had it Damn thing to fit it. Yep. There. These stupid clips. So I popped the wheel back on and bolted it down, back the truck, 
out of the drive and pull it back in so I can get them all straight. And now what we're going to do is zero this thing up on the back and then we'll be ready to check this alignment. And we are just about a quarter, which is perfect. I'm going to put this one back together. And then we'll do the other one. And then what we'll do is take it for a test drive, bring it back, and double check it. Just see how we did. Well, I just took it for a test drive, and she tracks beautifully now. And I've got both wheels done, and they're all lined up. Um, remember, this is just, this fix is only close. Okay, you, you can't get it perfect with that. But if you get it close, you're going to be okay. I'd suggest you take it to a shop and have it aligned right. I will do that with Strappy here. Uh, right now, I just wanted to get her close. But still got some more stuff to do to it. And once we get it all done, then we'll take her in the shop and we'll have uh, an alignment guy put it up on a rack and we'll get it aligned right. So if you enjoying what you're seeing, I appreciate you hit the like button and I'll see you next time. Ah!